on this episode of Boxing World Weekly. The great expectations of Ramirez, the comeback kings, and super middleweight destruction. Emerson once said, treat a man as he is, and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he could be, and he will become what he should be. Expectations are usually always higher than they should be, and that makes them that much harder to meet. Boxing doesn't hide from them either. Having a decorated amateur career, signing with a big promotional company, being compared to past greats, all of these will only increase a fighter's expectations as a professional, and sometimes that's just unfair. Featherweight world title contender Robisi Ramirez has experienced all of the above. In terms of decorated amateur careers, it doesn't really get any better than his. The Cuban captured golds in the Youth World Championships, Youth Olympics, Pan Ams, and not once but twice in the Summer Olympics. That's what Ramirez's resume looked like before he even made the switch to the paid ranks. Then came the rest of the expectations. He signed with top-ranked promotions in 2019, and the great Bob Arum compared him to their last two-time Olympic gold medalist signing in Vasily Lomachenko, a man who was widely considered the greatest amateur of all time, who became a world champion in just his third fight, became the fastest three-division title holder, and a pound-for-pound -pound king. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot to live up to. As a fighter will say, their pro debut is usually the one they're most nervous for. And in Ramirez's case, it's a safe assumption that he might have been extra anxious for this one. Unfortunately, it seemed to be too much for Ramirez as he lost by split decision in a four-round contest. And in this cruel sport, the expectations went out the window for a lot of fans and media members. But maybe that's a silver lining, because since then he's won 11 straight, with 7 knockouts, 3 of them coming in his last 3 outings. The biggest win of his career came against a man who maybe had the lowest expectations for him. That was fellow highly touted prospect Abraham Nova. Like it's another stepping stone, you know, to get my world title. He's, I think I said he's a good fighter. He, he did what he did in amateur, but the only reason he, I think, they got this shot with me is because of his amateur background. I don't, I don't think it's, it's a 50-50 fight in my eyes. I'm not really, not at all, you know. So, but a lot of people think it is. That they'll find out Saturday night. That didn't age well. Except with a first round knock. Oh, and there is the left hand that floors Nova, and the fight is over. On April 1st, the expectations return when he takes on former world champion Isaac Dogbe for the vacant WBO featherweight world title. Ramirez is the A side, and with that comes the assumption he will win. But it's not because Dogbe isn't a worthy challenger at this point in his career. His only two losses are to three-division champion Emmanuel Navarrete. The last one came in 2019, before Ramirez had even turned pro. Since then, Dogbe has won three straight over the likes of Adam Lopez, Christopher Diaz, and Joaquin Gonzalez. And oh yeah, Dogbe is a year younger than Ramirez. It's no secret Cuba is known for their amateur boxing system, but not all good Cubans who turn pro end up living up to the hype. Treat a man as he is, and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he could be, and he will become what he should be. This is Ramirez's opportunity to prove he can live up to expectations. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. Coming up on Boxing World Weekly, 130 pounds of clarity, and Benavidez goes big. In the sweet world of boxing in 2023, there are so many divisions that have one fighter holding all four straps. And that's great. 
but when it comes to the weight classes that don't, they are also just as intriguing, especially if they are deep with talent. One of the most prominent divisions that come to mind when thinking about this situation is Super Featherweight. The main reason for this is because of the departure of former unified champ Shakur Stevenson. Now, there's a whole new crop of champions and contenders looking to spice things up this year. We'll start at the top with the guys holding the gold. Newly crowned WBO champion Emmanuel Navarrete just made his debut at 130 when he beat Liam Wilson for the vacant title. Oshaki Foster just became the WBC champ when he turned rags to riches by beating the two division champion looking to make it three, Ray Vargas. Hector Luis Garcia is the WBA champion after he beat Roger Gutierrez for it in the latter half of 2022. He kicked off this year by challenging Gervonta Davis for his WBA lightweight strap but was unsuccessful and plans on coming back to 130 to defend in the near future. Finally, that leads us to the IBF title holder, and this is where things get a little murky. The current champ is Shafkat Rakhimov, who beat Zelfa Barrett for it at the end of last year when it was vacant. But the only reason it was up for grabs is that Jor Cordina, who beat Kenichi Ogawa for it earlier in 2022, was supposed to be the one fighting Rakhimov in his first defense, but had to withdraw due to injury. That forced the IBF to strip him and find another challenger for Rakhimov. But thankfully, both fighters and the sanctioning body have made the right move since then, and now Rakimov will defend the title against Cordina on April 22nd. So, all four belts are claimed and ready to be challenged for. These are the names the champs should be preparing for. The best place to start would be the former WBC champ Oscar Valdez, whose only loss came to Stevenson. A man who pretty much knocks everyone out with this most recent one looking like this. Now he is in talks with Navarrete for a fight later this year to try to get that belt back. If Vaquero's last fight is any indication, Valdez might be drooling right now because Wilson did knock down Navarrete before eventually getting stopped, but that showed he also belongs in this conversation of contenders. The loser of Rakimov versus Cordina will still be in the mix, obviously, since they are both undefeated world-class fighters going into it. World title challenger Lamont Roach Jr. has built himself back up with four straight wins since his loss in his first and only world title shot to date against Jamel Herring. Robson Conceso has only lost to Valdez and Stevenson in two very valiant efforts, not to mention a bit controversial. And undefeated prospect Henry Lebron is on his way up and could very well be the next in line for a fight with the Brazilian. This is all just scratching the surface. Undisputed champions are the end goal, and boxing today has done a great job getting there with a lot of divisions. But the weight classes that are still working towards that objective are possibly the more intriguing stories to follow for fight fans. Super Featherweight is the perfect example with a full crop of champions and contenders and no clear indicator on what's to come. What's your prediction for how 130 pounds looks at the end of 2023? On February 18th, two-division champion Ray Vargas attempted to add another weight class strap to his mantle when he took on Oshaki Foster for the WBC Super Featherweight title. Although he fell short and he lost his O, he still remains a surefire future Hall of Famer and gains more respect in doing so. So, this week's top five is dedicated to the best fighters that have suffered a loss in their career so far. And oh yeah, they are definitely heading to Canastota when it's all said and done. Starting off with two division champion and current WBC Super Flyweight title holder Juan Francisco Estrada. He has lost on three occasions so far, but two of those L's came against fellow future Hall of Famers, and he avenged every single one. He will still go down as one of the best to ever do it in the lower weight classes. From the bottom to the top in terms of heaviness, the next man comes from the heavyweight division. Olympic bronze medalist, a consensus top five hardest puncher of all time, 10 world title defenses, and has knocked out or knocked down all 42 men he's faced. He is the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. His only two losses 
came to what some people consider one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Tyson Fury. And he's on his way back to a world title in the near future. Next up is one of two undisputed champions on this list, and when a fighter accomplishes that, it pretty much guarantees you a plaque in Canastota. The king of the super welterweight division, Jamel Charlo. The one and only loss in his career came against Tony Harrison in 2018. He avenged it by knocking him out a year later and then went on to unify the entire division by beating Jason Rosario, drawing Brian Castaño, and then stopping him in their rematch most recently. Now for one of the greatest middleweights to ever grace the ring, Gennady Golovkin. Triple G was a highly decorated amateur, capped off with an Olympic silver medal, and then went on to become one of the most feared fighters of this generation. He knocked out 23 straight foes, en route to becoming the unified champion, beat Daniel Jacobs by unanimous decision, and then this is where his career-defining moment came. The first of an eventual three contests against the greatest fighter of this generation, Canelo Alvarez. Golovkin would go winless in these fights, but they are probably what pushes him over the edge for having one of the greatest careers at 160. That leads us perfectly to our number one spot, which is the legend himself, Canelo Alvarez. A four division champion, pound for pound number one at multiple points in his career, current undisputed super middleweight champion, the biggest name in boxing today, and only has two blemishes on his resume. A loss to Floyd Mayweather Jr. when he was 23 years old, and another to possibly the best at 175 pounds, Dimitri Bevel. Keeping in mind, Canelo is probably best suited for 160 pounds. He is a first ballot, unanimous Hall of Famer, and is a perfect example that losses don't hurt a career, but avoiding the biggest fights does. On February 26th, Badu Jack made history by stopping Alonga Makabu in the 12th round to claim the WBC World Cruiserweight title. The Ripper is now the first man to capture world titles at super middleweight, light heavyweight, and cruiserweight. And at 39 years, 3 months, and 26 days old, he is also the oldest fighter to capture their first recognized cruiserweight strap. In this week's Boxing World Weekly Trivia, we want to know, who is the second oldest fighter to claim their first cruiserweight world title? The answer later on. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. After the break on Boxing World Weekly, the legend of Stitch Duran, and Plants Road to Redemption. Welcome back to Boxing World Weekly. Before the break, we asked, after Badu Jack, who is the second oldest fighter to claim their first cruiserweight world title? The answer, Giacobbe Fregameni. On October 24, 2008, Fregameni beat Rudolf Kratsch via unanimous technical decision following an accidental head clash to claim the vacant WBC world cruiserweight title. At the time, this made him the oldest fighter to claim their first cruiserweight strap at 39 years, 2 months, and 11 days old. Boxing World Weekly speaking with the legendary cutman and actor Jacob Duran, or better known as Stitch. And I want to start with where did this all begin? Yeah, well, let me go with the name Stitch first. I wrote a book called From the Fields to the Garden. The fields were that I was a farm worker, you know, born and raised in the migrant camp, right? And uh, the garden is Madison Square Garden. So we've already gotten all that. Anyway, I'm in the Creed movie, so when they interviewed, uh, Michael came forward and, and we got some nice interviews and all that, but he said, one, of the, one of the points he's bringing up, he says, yeah, you know, Stitch is wrapping my hands and all of a sudden Stitch says, hey, Michael, do you know my real name? And he says, Stitch. He says, no, 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 no. Do you know my real name? I'm asking him, right? And he says, uh, no. And he says, hey, anybody here know Stitch's real name? And uh, they said, no. Nah. I said, no. Nah. I said, Jacob. You know, so yeah, it's not, uh, 
not widely known, at least in this generation of combat sports, what uh, my real name is. And nicknames should be given to you, right? Uh, yeah. Through some kind of honor or some kind of a uh, point of, of your combat. Like, uh, so uh, I had a school of kickboxing and I was working with Dennis Alexio, which was at that point the heavyweight champion of the world. Bad, bad boy. Best athlete I ever met in my life. Well, one of his sparring partners, Dave Rooney, is fighting on the same card and I'm working his fights and I'm making the transition from being a coach to being a cut man, learning all the skills. And and he ended up with a small cut and I know nothing. I just applied pressure and he ended up winning the fight. And I got the little pieces of tape, little, and I ripped them like a butterfly and I closed it. And he says, ah, oh, I don't have to go to the hospital. You send me some stitches, I'm gonna call you Stitch. And I just went to the uh, oh, Oakland Raiders, that's where I was from, the Las Vegas Raiders training camp. And uh, they're teaching some of these Raiders on the off season, the boxing. So they want me to go by and, ma and wrap the hands of Max Crosby. And so I get there and I wrap his hands, but I'm telling him the stories of how, listen man, here's what you guys, you guys are all modern day gladiators. Anybody that makes contact, you're modern day gladiators, but deep inside, you're all babies and my job is to take care of the baby. And you know, he he understands. Uh, but the same thing with fighters, you know, is is they're going into battle and and uh, they know I got their back. Creed three is coming out soon, and that'll be your fourth Rocky movie, but you've been in all the Creed movies. I wanna know what it's like working with Michael B. Jordan and what's the relationship there. I man, he tells me I love you and I tell him I love you. You know, when when we met the first time for this last one, we come out of our trailers and I go and we hug each other. I said, Michael, I'm just so proud of you and this and that, you know, so and so. We start choking up and all right, man, bye. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so we have a great, great relationship. And that's why, you know, he says, I'm I'm part of the team. You know, I'm one of the pillars. And that's what he said during the interview for my documentary. So great relationship. And he did a great job with him as a director. The movie's awesome. The right place at the right time, you know. And it, you know, it's funny because that's why I told Stallone. I said, I couldn't sleep at night. And, so I'm here with you, Ryan Krugler, Michael B. Jordan. He said, you earned it. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I did. So I've earned my stripes, and but I'm lucky, you know, to be in that position uh, to have accepted these offers that have been presented. You know, and I always tell people, and I think I told you before, that line we're scared to cross. If you don't cross it, you'll never, never get there. If you love the fights, make sure to check out more Boxing World Weekly exclusives on YouTube. Full fights, extended interviews, and everything else a fight fan could want. Up next on Boxing World Weekly a cruiserweight shakeup and Plant versus Benavidez. Boxing disputes can be settled pretty quickly. On March 25th, another one will be decided. Caleb Plant versus David Benavidez, settling who gets a shot at the undisputed super middleweight king Canelo Alvarez next. This is simply a great fight. Both former world champions that really don't like one another and have the ability to knock each other out. The only difference between them is Plant already had the shot at Canelo and despite a valiant effort with his slick boxing tactics, he got stopped in the championship rounds. Benavidez has been calling out Canelo's name for years, but due to his own outside of the ring issues, he has never been taken seriously by the king of the super middleweight division. Sweet Hands was a reigning and defending world champion after he snatched the IBF strap in 2019 by O boxing Jose Uzcategui and going on to have three successful defenses over the likes of Mike Lee, Vincent Feigenboots, and Caleb Truax. After his loss to Canelo, he took some time off and then returned in spectacular fashion against a former Benavidez opponent, Anthony Durrell. <laughs> In the other corner lies a man that has been toted as the boogeyman of 168 pounds because he seems to walk through all of his competitors. 
26 and 0, 23 knockouts. Currently riding a six fight stoppage streak with names like Darrell, Romer Alexis Angulo, Ronald Ellis, and most recently, David Lemieux. This is the number one versus number two at 168, not including Canelo. The winner is all but guaranteed a shot at the biggest name in boxing. The loser doesn't just fall out of contention for the near future, but they also lose a lot of respect from their fans because of how much trash talk is going on. Plant actually bought the domain davidbenavidez.com, which links to a shop of his own merchandise. That was after they already had a heated kickoff press conference. Okay. Been on the floor already, so I'm gonna put you. And back you've on been the on the floor. canvas too. You got dropped by Ronald Graville. Oh, I didn't get put to sleep like you. I wouldn't I put to sleep. sleep. I got, I got like back you. up. You got knocked the out. I got back everybody. Up. These two clearly don't like each other, but they do have one common goal, and that opportunity is life changing. Some fighters get ridiculed for not making big fights or ducking some opponents. These two have never been in that conversation, and they are proving it once again. Caleb Plant versus David Benavidez on March 25th. A big fight, a great matchup with bad blood, and a rivalry to be settled. Here are this week's top five cruiserweights. Badu Jack, Arsen Gulamirian, Marius Bredis, Jaya Pattaya, Lawrence Oakley. Our fighter of the week is WBC World Cruiserweight Champion, Badu Jack. The Ripper earned the strap with an impressive 12th round knockout of Alunga Makabu on February 26th, completing his remarkable journey for three division gold. And that's it for another round of Boxing World Weekly. Until next time, enjoy the fights.